What's up, guys? I don't even know what to call this podcast anymore because part of me wants to, wants to interview people that are across from me so that I learn from them. But then the other part of me wants to speak into this mic and speak life into your life. Uh, my name is Dr. Adrian Mess. I'm the owner of AMP Mental Health. We are a practice that offers therapy and psychiatry here in the state of Florida. Um, and we accept almost every major insurance. But let me let me get to this. I saw a picture of myself today, or I'm sorry, I saw a picture of a mattress today. Um, in 2017, I had separated, moved in by myself, remodeled a small apartment, uh, a small condo that I purchased in Coral Gables. First time really in my adult life where I was just kind of on my own. And uh, it was a rude awakening. It was a new beginning. It was a huge reset and, and a restart. Um, I could say it was probably one of the most challenging parts of my life that really uh, began to reshape me and, and redefined who I was as an individual. And if it wasn't for this very difficult period in my life, then I don't know where I'd be today because that definitely shaped me. It shaped my mindset and it made me realize that I was just on my own. I asked Ch ChatGBT here to just give me like some points to go over. And um, I just read through them briefly, but I can reflect on each and every one of them. So it says, reflect on your current situation and take some time to evaluate your life and identify what isn't working for you. Reflect on the happy areas where you feel stuck on how oh, that's bullshit. Anyhow, um, let's ask ChatGBT something different. Give me 20 interview questions to ask around this topic. Let me tell you, ChatGPT is a game changer. Changed my life, changed the way I do business, speeds up things a lot more. Can write emails real quick. If you're not using AI yet, you should. You should be because um, you're going to fall behind. So it says, can you share a personal experience where you had to start over in your life and what made you? What motivated you to make that change? Well, nothing motivated me. It was just the end of a relationship. Um, so it was just a point where I, I had to restart. Uh, like I said, I found myself with a, a, a new little condo that I was proud to own and remodel. Um, but it was definitely a restart. It was the first time that I wasn't with my daughter every day. And I want to say it was probably the biggest challenge was just recognizing like, hey, I'm not going to be able to shape this person's life day in and day out how I originally intended. I thought I would be able to be this father figure where I was just ever present, um, able to interact with her every time she came home from school. Uh, and just really be that father that I, I always dreamt of being. Um, and and maybe in some ways that is true and that was taken from me or, or I had to walk away from it. Um, but the truth is that it also changed my adult life where from the ages of 26 to like 32 or 33, uh, I felt somewhat stuck and trapped, often controlled, and then when when I was on my own and I did have my daughter half of the time, I gave her my all for that half. But then for the other part of that time, all of a sudden I was uh I almost don't even want to talk about this. I feel like I want to start over. Hey guys, welcome to the Finding Balance podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Adrian Mesa. And in all honesty, I almost want to change the name of this interview. Uh, I'm sorry, of this podcast, because uh, I think I spend a lot of time interviewing other people. Um, but I also want the opportunity to speak life into other lives that are listening out there. And I think I gain a lot from having a guest on this podcast. I gain a tremendous amount. In fact, it's, it's heavily impacted my life. Um, whether it's the way I look at business, the decisions that I make, the way I hire, the personnel that I uh, uh, attract and take on into my team. Um, it's helped me on a personal level. It's helped me engage with other fathers and understand how they perceive fatherhood, uh, how other people view their successes and their failures. Uh, so it's been huge in many ways. Um but I think it's just as important for me to kind of use this mic as a platform to inform people on my experiences, my skill set, my journey into 
my professional life as well as into entrepreneurship because they're very separate. And so I want to use this mic to inspire people who are in a stage of life, possibly a healthcare provider, maybe somebody who just wants to become an entrepreneur or somebody who wants to step outside of the norm and become uncomfortable. And I think uh, I think I offer a lot of value in that, not only because I've done it, but because I'm living in it right now as we speak. Um, and so I'm just going to go through this and I'm going to speak on a part of my life where I had to reset or restart, which was in 2017, um, had separated from my ex. I'm not going to get too, too much into that. Um, but it definitely reshaped my mindset. It, it reshaped my perception on, um, my need to learn how to do things just on my own a hundred percent. And the fact that I am alone in this world and there is nobody that is coming to rescue me just as there's nobody that's coming to rescue you. If you understand that nobody is coming to rescue you, whatever you want to accomplish, whatever you want to do, however you want to move forward, it is 100% up to you, nobody else. So I need you to just start off with embracing that. If you find yourself in a situation where all of a sudden you're starting over and you're expecting for somebody to come rescue you, it's not going to happen. So how did I overcome the fear or hesitation associated with starting over? Really, I had no choice. Um, it was just time to start over. A season of my life had ended. And, you know, a lot of people like to frame seasons of their lives and people that come and go from their lives in negative or positive ways. Um, but really, I mean, there's just people that will be part of your life temporarily for a season and then they will be gone. Um, and I, I want to look at it just from a positive perspective and say, man, most of the people, almost all of the people who have come into my life have taught me some extremely valuable lessons. Some of those, some of those lessons have been extremely painful and difficult emotionally, spiritually, um, financially. These have all been difficult situations, but I have learned and grown from them tremendously. Um, how did I, what strategies did I use to navigate through the uncertainty? Matt, I, I definitely believe that finding pleasure in, in yourself, um, in your own skin, and I mean that not only from an emotional, pers emotional perspective, but I mean that from a physical perspective. The gym, honestly, has always been part of my life where I found so much comfort. I would find community and I would find other like-minded people who were just trying to better themselves. And that often started in the gym. And these are people who are working on themselves physically, but that is just that is just the way that their their inward expression is being displayed to the world. Most people who are working them on themselves diligently in the gym are probably working on themselves the same way in other areas of their life. And so this has been a major, major strategy that I have used to navigate through these tough times is just utilizing the gym. Use, utilizing the communities that exist within the gym, finding support, encouragement, and just positive energy from people who are around me who are just like me, lost in the world, but trying to better themselves one way or another. So what were some of the biggest challenges you faced when starting over and how did you overcome them? Um, I would say one of the biggest struggles that I faced was just coming to the realization that I didn't have uh, the control uh, or not the control, but the relationship that I wanted with my daughter day in and day out. Um, but then I realized how when I was there day in and day out, it almost becomes expected. And so now I had set this part, this this time apart to provide time solely for myself for days in a row. And then days in a row that were solely devoted to my daughter. And so once I started to accept that, man, maybe... Maybe there is something to this. And in this rest or in this respite that I was able to take in between fatherhood and single uh, and singlehood, I guess, uh, there was there was just great um, there was just great opportunity to find myself in my early 30s. Did you have a support system during your transition and how did their support impact your journey? I've always sought a support system. Um, a support system is extremely important to any individual out there. If you're trying to do this completely 
on your own and by yourself, isolated, you're going to struggle. Now, there's always a time for isolation. There's always a time to be alone and to vote to devote yourself to a specific task um, or maybe something that you're just taking on, right? Some sort of project. Maybe you're writing a book. Maybe you're into art. Maybe you're into poetry. Maybe you're studying to progress and move forward. Those are times for isolation. However, a support system is extremely important just to have somebody to fall back on when you're having a really shitty day and you just need to either feel heard, feel loved, and feel supported. And so that support system becomes crucial in those tough days when you've completely exhausted yourself. You don't know which direction to turn in. And you could pick up the phone and just say, hey, mom, how are you? I'm having a pretty shitty day and I just need to talk for like five minutes. Um, or maybe it's a therapist. Or maybe it's a friend. So whoever that support system is for you, I suggest that you utilize them and, and allow them to give you the love that you need in the moments that you need them. And hopefully, the hope is that that reciprocates because that person will need you as well. What advice would you give to someone who is contemplating starting over but is afraid of losing what they currently have? Well, the advice that I would have for them is that if you're contemplating starting over, you probably don't really enjoy what you currently have. There must be some sort of issue or break that's in the system that is making you think, damn, I want to start over. I want out of this current situation. So whether it's a toxic job environment, whether it is a friendship that you no longer want to be a part of, whether it is um, a community that you have kind of become ingrained in, but you want to exit. I think uh, if you're thinking of leaving, like what are you really losing? And so a lot of times we try to, or, or we tend to uh, glorify, or we tend to, uh, we tend to have the, these feelings of, of almost, how, how do I, how do I word this? We we try to, or we tend to, we tend to glamorize it. We we tend to glamorize that relationship after we've we've lost it. We we tend to fantasize about all these beautiful things that we left behind, but then the the negative parts become very murky sometimes. And that's why some people fall back into that loop where they keep going back and they keep going back, they keep going back because they, they once they're separated from it, they fantasize about the good times and they completely disregard all of the negative that still exists. Um, so if you don't address the negative situations that are there, then you're just going to fall into this vicious cycle of, going back to that toxic relationship, that toxic culture, that toxic community without bettering yourself. Um, I'm honestly in a stage in my life where I want to better myself and I want to put myself around people who are like-minded, who are pursuing more, who are involved in entrepreneurship uh, and who are just looking to level up in life and put themselves around like-minded people. Whether it's an organization that I'm joining, whether it's BNI, whether it's entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurs organization, um, these are all places that I may have to pay to become a member in. But in the end, I'm paying for the same thing that you would pay for if you were going to a university or going to uh, become a member of a frat, etc. These are things that help expand your network. They tap you into people who are like you. Um, so and so there's just a price of entry otherwise like how do you get into a, a different network of people um yeah there's there's different organizations you could join that are free but typically the ones that bring a membership fee means that people are really devoted to that cause or that organization how did you manage your emotions during the process of starting over and did you experience any moments of doubt? And if so, how did you overcome them? My guys, my friends, you experience moments of doubt every single day in your life when you're trying to pursue something. Today, somebody just told me on the phone, they were like, um, I told them, you know, if you're in the world of entrepreneurship, there's nothing that's easy. Uh, every day is a struggle. Every day is an uphill battle. Every day you face resistance. And a lot of people who aren't in this game, they think that it's the opposite. They think that, 
there is no struggle. It's all easy. And anybody who's telling you that it's easy is lying to you and lying to your face. So have there been setbacks or failures along the way? There's been there have been hundreds, if not thousands, of setbacks in the past four years. Some very minor that were easily um remedied. And then there was others that have been <laughs> have cost me hours and hours of sleep at night. Let's just leave it that way. So failure is going to be part of this journey, no matter what it is that you're doing, whatever it is that you're pursuing, when you are resetting your life and you're looking to restart, usually it's fresh and it's brand new and the things that you're pursuing are new. Now, I don't know about you, but whenever I am trying something new, there's going to be hundreds or thousands of failures along the way in order to become good. There's no child that has learned to walk that didn't fall about a thousand times before they took their first steps. Right, And even when they took their first steps, they were still wobbly, they were unsteady, and they fell back down. And guess what? The child just doesn't give up. That toddler doesn't give up. That, that toddler doesn't even think about it. They want to try again and again and again. They'll go to sleep that night. They will rest. They will recover. They will regain strength. They will eat. They will move forward, and they will walk again, and they'll fall. So how do you navigate those failures and how do you keep moving forward? I think it's just that. It's in, if you really love the process, if you really love what you're trying to do, whether it's fixing a relationship, whether it's uh, gaining, uh, improving your finances, whether it's getting more organized, whether it's improving your studying abilities, know that you're going to fail over and over and over again, and it's just part of the process. Now, the biggest thing to do is mitigate those the huge failures. Try to limit the amount of huge failures that you have. Micro failures are going to be great, but those huge failures that really set you back. For, in, for instance, you get into, let's say, CRNA school and you're studying anesthesia and you're two years in. Now's not the time to fail. Now's the time to hone in and really say, man, the finish line is there. If I, if I fail a quiz or something along the way, cool. But if I fail an entire semester or I have the potential of getting kicked out of a program for failing two courses, then that's a major setback you want to avoid. Same thing as in a relationship. In the beginning, you're going to have fights and discussions. But if you really care about the relationship, you don't want these fights and discussions to blow up and be complete blowouts. You want to be able to communicate effectively and talk your way through if you want the relationship to survive. What skills or strengths did you discover about yourself during the process of starting over? <sighs> when you start over and you start realizing, man, that didn't kill me. It's really true. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. If you allow it to strengthen you, if you really recover, if you really feed yourself and understand, like, this is not the end. This does not define me. This failure, this, this need to restart and humble myself and quiet my ego, this is healthy. It's a beautiful thing. So once you can embrace that, once you can make that part of your identity, the fact that, hey, I am resetting. Hey, maybe this does feel like a setback. But maybe it's more like, like a catapult that's about to launch me. Maybe it's more like a rubber band that's about to snap back. And that tension is just there. And that tension kind of brings some pain and some hurt. But all of a sudden, poof, it propels me forward. Did you find it challenging to let go of certain aspects of your old life? And how did you cope with the feelings of loss or nostalgia? There's definitely going to be aspects of your old life that's going to be extremely difficult to let go of. Because there's parts of everything about who you used to be that it's easier. There's comfort. It's easier to hang around with the same people and talk about the same things and not challenge yourself to move forward. Have you ever spoken to somebody where you're challenging them and letting them know that they could do better and they almost get frustrated or angry at you? Well, that's how you should be about getting frustrated and angry at yourself because you should know that you should be able to move forward and do better. But if you're not doing it, then you should be frustrated. You should be upset. And you should be using that energy to find out what are the things that I need to do to move myself forward instead of just beating yourself up about it. Because that's something else a lot of us tend to do. We find ourselves in a difficult spot a difficult spot or a difficult situation. And rather than saying, damn, what's holding me back? And let me identify these things so I can tackle them. 
No, we just want to get emotional and say, fuck, I keep fucking up. I'm such, a, I'm such a piece of shit. I can't do better. I keep losing. And you can. You can win. You can win over and over and over again. But you got to get past that mindset. Past that, my, that mindset of I can't and it won't happen to me. It will. But just get ready to fail about a thousand times. Get ready to move forward in centimeters and not in feet and leaps and bounds every day because this is a this is truly a marathon i hate these cliches but it's so true this life all these journeys that we take that are worth our while take long periods of time and if you don't start to embrace that you're just always gonna feel like you're not moving forward every day you gotta choose three to five goals for the day let's just start with three every day choose three major things that you have to do and once you hit those three, it's a big fat W. If you don't hit the three, it's an L. All right? So now day after day after day, seven days a week, you hit a W. You hit a W. And every once in a while, you'll hit an L. The goal is to have more Ws than Ls. I would tell you, try to make it 75-25. 75% of the time, you're getting a W. And the most, which is a C at best, is uh, 25% of the time, get an L. That goes for your consistency at the gym. That goes for your consistency towards any sort of self-development, your consistency towards a goal at, such as entrepreneurship or school, etc. And in many cases, in programs in school, a 75 isn't even passing, so be careful with that. How did you cope with the feelings of loss or nostalgia? It's just understanding that that nostalgia is a lie. Those great feelings, they no longer, they, they exist within me, but they no longer exist in the real world. And so it's beautiful to reminisce and think about those times, but don't expect them to just revive themselves or come back to life because most of the time it doesn't. This is not being negative or pessimistic. It's just the reality of it. You are fantasizing about something that once happened you are no longer that same person and that situation is no longer the same. So if you keep tapping back into that, and I'm just going to focus on a relationship because a lot of people fall into this. You keep tapping back into that old relationship and circling back around, circling back around. You're not leaving any room in your life to move forward. You're not leaving any room in your life for that new love, that new joy, that new excitement in a new person. Why? Because you keep going back to the same old dopamine hit and that same old feeling. And when time after time, it lets you down. Were there any unexpected benefits or positive outcomes that you experienced as a result of starting over? Shit, there's been a, a hundred, there's been so many things that have, uh, that I've benefited from. I've grown individually. Uh, I've grown as a, as a parent. I've understood that I can't please everybody who's around me. Uh, I've understood how I tried to salvage things that were far gone and lost. Um, how I just thought that redemption was always the way. And sometimes a huge part of growing up and maturing is just letting things go. A huge part about just growing and maturing is learning to let things go. And that was probably something that was... Uh, unexpected uh, an unexpected be benefit and an, a positive outcome what advice would you give to someone who is considering starting over but is con concerned about the potential risks involved just go just go if you really know that it's time to start over if you really know that um you are not where you're supposed to be if you wake up in the morning and recognize time day after day after day and you've already looked inwardly and know it's it's not you know that just whatever situation you're in is not for you, then it's time to make a change. And so that's my advice that I would give you is just go. How did you stay motivated and resilient during times when things didn't go as planned? It has nothing to do with motivation. It has everything to do with discipline and consistency. Whether you're feeling up or down, whether it's raining, snowing, sleet, or sunshine, you are doing the damn thing. You are 
you are making the effort to complete those three things that I just spoke about and get them done and get the W for the day. There's going to be plenty of days where you don't feel like doing anything, where your motivation is not there, where your desire is not there. And that is when you have to just say, what are, what are the three things that I need to do today to move forward? And you go and you do those things. What resources or tools did you use to find helpful during your journey, your journey of starting over? I can't stress enough that I'm on this mic right now on a podcast and podcasts have carried me through those tough times. It's Gary Vaynerchuk during COVID who helped me really put myself out there on social media and I stopped caring, stopped worried, worrying about the judgment. I stopped worrying about what people might say. I stopped worried about what I might look like. And I just started putting myself out there. And as a result, I've been able to help so many people. I've been able to get over a thousand patients seen every month now. I've been able to grow my business from zero to this year. We, I hope that we hit $2 million in, in revenue. Um, we have 20 employees. We have some employees that are abroad. We've implemented an AI to, to answer the phones when nobody, when everybody else is busy. We have a preceptorship program. All these different things have come. Um, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, but yeah. They've come as a result of listening to these different people. It's the Vaynerchuks, the Hormozis, uh, the Andy Frisellas, um, any of these entrepreneurial I don't want to say motivational because these people are just mentors, honestly. They're mentors and they're putting themselves out there. So I'm trying to do the same thing. And if you want to listen to me, then I got to I gotta do a better job of putting myself out there on this mic so that people can relate to me and understand what I'm doing, what my mindset is, how I'm moving forward, and um, how we can move forward together. Because that's, that's what this is about. This is about establishing a network, even locally, where we know that we have like-minded people around one another who can tap into each other as resources so we can move move forward as entrepreneurs and even as humans honestly can you share a specific moment or achievement that made you realize the sacrifices you made were worth it i think the day that i rented my condo and saw it as an investment property it definitely changed my mindset um, remodeling my current house definitely changed my mindset. Building a little efficiency again. So I'm I'm just trying to gain doors right now. I'm trying to gain passive income to make my life and my quality of life better and better every year. I'm 40 years old right now, so my time is limited. But I know that if I focus the next 10 to 15 years on really building myself up um, and acquiring real estate like like the game of Monopoly, I think my later years of my life are going to be much easier and it's going to be just so much more beneficial for me as an individual and then for anybody who surrounds me. Um, and I'm going to be able to then mentor people about even that, not only about business, entrepreneurship, establishing wealth, um, building a real estate profile, investing in Bitcoin, things that nobody has taught me. I have not had a mentor at all. Nobody has shown me anything about entrepreneurship, um, I, uh, anything that I've learned about accounting, everything I've learned about stocks, uh, crypto, or real estate has been on my own or having conversations with other people. But it hasn't been a mentor that just looked and said, hey, this is the way, this is what you should do. It was like curiosity, conversations, investigations, and then risking it myself. How did you start? How did starting over impact your relationships with others? Did you find that some relationships grew stronger while others faded away? This is actually a conversation I've been having a lot lately. Um, I'm recognizing that when I'm around, when I'm around some people, not everybody, but when I'm around some people, like my friends, my good, good friends are my good friends. But it's really difficult for me to establish a new relationship with somebody who I can't relate to. And the fact that they're, if they're not involved in fitness, if they're not involved in entrepreneurship and self-development and wanting to grow as a human, and they just want to sit around and, I don't know, just not have much to contribute to the conversation, then it's ha I'm having a very difficult time 
really connecting to them. And it has nothing to do with me thinking I'm above them or anything like that. It just has to do with this is all my mind is is churning day in and day out. And I don't want to invest myself in someone who's not helping me grow. Um, some might so, say it's selfish. Some might say it's arrogant. Some might say it's self-centered. Um, and I might say yes, because right now I, I know how limited my time is in my life. And now, will I go out of my way to help somebody? I will. But how much of that help and how much of my time that I want to invest in anybody else is completely up to me. And nobody can force me to be somewhere or engage in, with someone or something that I don't really feel is going to benefit me down the road. Looking back, what would you say is the most important lesson or insight you gained from your experience of starting over? <sighs> Just know it keeps going. No matter what, it, it, it keeps going. So no matter how big the failure, no matter how much it hurt, no matter how devastated you are or you were, this thing keeps going. And so you either let life pass you by and you sit there in anguish and despair and depression or you use that as fuel to get your ass up and to get moving. And that's completely up to you and nobody else. So that's the most important lesson I've gained. Starting over is an opportunity. It's not a failure. It's an opportunity. Because if you're starting over, that means you got another chance. So that alone implies that there's new life. You have a blank canvas. You have a fresh start. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? That's completely up to you. <sighs> and that's it, guys. That's all for today. Uh, I just want to share a little bit about um, coming back, making that comeback, starting over. And um, these are just some of the experiences that I had. If you are someone who is currently starting over, if you are going through a major life change or situation, you are not alone. I would encourage you to find a support system, to get help, find a therapist, use the community around you, tap into yourself, feed yourself, feed your soul, move your body, and just move forward. Just know that it goes on, whether you decide to sit back and dissipate and become a fraction of yourself or use this failure as fuel, the rest of the world will keep moving. When I was in the University of Miami as a professor, I'll never forget when a professor passed away and everybody cried and we shared a moment of silence. And when that lecture opened up the following week to the students again, and I peered in the window and I saw a fresh new professor and the same students sitting in the class, just moving forward with the rest of the semester. So just know that uh, we, are, we will be replaced. Whether you like it or not, you will be replaced. The world will move on. And so it's really up to you to move yourself forward, to find the consistency when the motivation doesn't exist, to propel yourself forward so that you could have a better future. I hope you guys, you guys have a great Monday. I'm going to try to put this out right now on Spotify. I'm not going to edit it. I'm not going to do much to it. Um, but I definitely need to jump on here and just share more things like this. It's just a matter of me preparing beforehand. But thanks for your time. Appreciate it. And have a good one. Take it easy.